the best treat, I think, of the highlight is a highlight when you get to hear from a, a noted artist, uh, someone who's done what many of you aspire to do, uh, and we have a real treat. Greg Mort is our artist today. Uh, just an impressive biography. Greg Mort is considered one of America's foremost contemporary painters and a preeminent influence on art in the 21st century. Uh, his unmistakably modern creations are the classic field of Dutch masters, but are juxtaposed with startlingly, startlingly modern designs uh, in his work. Uh, prominent collections include in the Smithsonian, the Corcoran Gallery of Art, Delaware Art Museum Academy, uh, the Academy Art Museum, Portland Museum of Art, and the Brandywine River Museum uh, all feature his artwork. In addition to more than 50 one-person exhibitions in the U.S., uh, Mort has shown uh, extensively abroad in Switzerland, Italy, Canada, the former Soviet Union, and Japan, where Vice President Mondale opened up one of his exhibitions. His art has had the honor to be part of the Smithsonian Sites Worldwide Traveling Exhibition Program. Um, since 1983, uh, Greg Mort has served his country as a commissioned NASA artist, joining the ranks of American artist icons Norman Rockwell and Robert Rauschenberg to our historic, nation's historic venture into space. Uh, Greg Mort's painting, Zero G Apples, was part of the first art exhibition in space on the International Space Station. In 2003, uh, Mr. Mort established the Art of Stewardship Project, the foundation that supports and encourages artists to use their art to build awareness about the Earth's environmental concerns. The Art of Stewardship Project organizes and mounts, and mounts exhibitions, conducts forums of colleges and universities, and establishes partnerships between artists and environmental organizations. Uh, Greg Mort has partnerships and also serves on the board of the McDonald Observatory, Circle of Blue, and is presently on the executive board of the Lowell Observatory. He is sought, he's a sought-after guest speaker on the subject of art, astronomy, science, and creativity. Uh, Greg Mort is completely self-taught and lives and paints with his family on a farm in Ashton, Maryland, and Port Clyde, Maine. Uh, so for a truly out-of-the-world artist, it's my pleasure to welcome Greg Mort. Good morning, everyone. What an honor it is to be here. I, uh, it's just amazing to see all these young, shining faces. It makes me uh, feel really fantastic. I have to thank, I have to thank uh, Congresswoman Edwards for her uh, invitation to be here and also to be one of the judges in uh, her district for the, uh, the artists. That was an amazing thing to uh, actually be able to pick some of the artwork. Uh, and I also have to, where is Veronica? Where did she go? She's up there, she is. Veronica, thank you for all your work in bringing me to the right place at the right time, which is, you know, it's a little bit of a, little bit of a battle. <laughs> but we're here, and uh, I have to start by saying that uh, I really believe civilization is advancing. Um, when I was in high school 40 years ago, wow, it's amazing to say 40 years ago, um, I don't think that the students in high school produced the kind of work that I saw walking through, through the tunnel today. I, I, I have to just, I am in awe of the, the caliber of the artwork, the sophistication of the artwork. I mean, it's, it equals uh, many uh, exhibits that I've seen over the last few years in college. So I, I applaud all of you because it's just amazing. And I, this, this little talk that I'm giving has been, has been billed as, a, uh, as an art workshop, but I feel like I could learn a lot from all of you if I had the time to just sit down and kind of chat and pick your brain and, you know, because that's so much of what art is anyway, is, is, is interchange of ideas and experience and, and we all absorb things, you know. Um, I think it was the, the composer Stravinsky who said, uh, great artists, um, bad artists borrow, great artists steal. So I would love to steal some of your great ideas if I could. Um, anyway, congratulations to all of you. This is, this is just an incredible thing and, and a great honor for me to be here. I, I, I just want to applaud everybody. <laughs> Um, and thank you for the introduction, Mark, and you, you've uh, uh, touched on some interesting things. I just want to mention about the, um, the painting that flew on the International Space Station. I like to, uh, I like to talk about that and say it was the, the poorest um, um, attended art show in history. <laughs> so, uh, but I do have a photo of my, my wa little watercolor painting kind of floating in the cabin of, uh, of the space station. So. <laughs> Um, anyway, I also like to remind people that the Earth is in space, so to go in space is kind of, a, it's kind of redundant. But anyway, um, 
I, I hope that I can uh, make my little, my little technical thing work here. I am also, I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal history. I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about technique, but I'm also going to talk about um, where art can take you. So it's going to be a little bit of a um, combination of a, of a deal. It's, uh, Mark mentioned the art of stewardship, which my wife Nadine, who is here today, and I started about five years ago. And this grew out of uh, some really interesting experiences because as you will learn as you go forth into life, um, amazing things happen just by sort of putting one foot in front of the next. So uh, let's see if my... Um, being 59 years old, I grew up during the space race, so I was kind of uh, swept away by the whole thing of getting to the moon. And all of you guys here today, you students, you were born after they landed on the moon, which is just astounding to me. Um, this is the first person to orbit the Earth. His name was Yuri Gagarin. And uh, again, I remember being in the, in the supermarket and seeing his picture on the cover of Time magazine and thinking, wow, the Russians really are winning, you know? So it was, there was a, uh, the race to get to the moon was kind of a political thing, but it also inspired uh, generations of young people, I being one of them. So Yuri Gagarin was, was an amazing person. And the reason I show his picture is that uh, when he was in orbit, uh, in addition to, to singing in Russian, of course, Mother Russia knows all, sees all, I mean, he did sing that song. Of course, at that point, you know, Mother Russia really could see all. But he looked down for the, you know, as the first time in human history, he looked down and he said, the earth is blue. Now, that's a pretty simple statement, but think about it. Here's a guy traveling 17,500 miles an hour, about 100 miles above the surface. He looks out and what does he say? He says the earth is blue. Well, he was the first person to see that. So um, that is a pivotal point, believe it or not, in human history. I'd also like to talk about, and most of you already realize this because you're artists, the power of imagery. This is a very famous picture. This is perhaps the most reproduced photograph in human history. And it's, uh, you all know it's raising the flag on Iwo Jima. Um, they had some trouble identifying the, um, the people in the picture when it first came out and was circulated during World War II, it's particularly the gentleman in the front because really all you can see is his rear end. But his mother called in the newspaper and identified. She said, I know that's my son. I changed his diaper. <laughs> she said, I know that but anywhere. But the real point of showing this picture is, again, the power of imagery. Think of, of what a driving force this was in terms of morale for the United States. But I also want you to think about the brevity of this picture. Okay, Joe Rosenthal, who was a war photographer, he, had a, a, he didn't have a digital camera. They hadn't been invented yet. And he had a, a, a view camera, which is when you kind of look through the, the top to take a picture. And he didn't have time to sort of set it up on a tripod or anything, so he... He just pointed it at these guys as they were raising this flag on a, on a piece of plumbing pipe that they found. Okay, this picture, the most reprinted picture in human history, is a result of one four hundredth of a second. Okay, it was later recreated and they made a movie and so forth of the raising, but that, this is the original picture, the original uncropped picture, the power of imagery. Perhaps the second uh, most popular picture, and this is uh, from Apollo 8, 1968. Um, and it's of the Earth from the Moon. And this was one of the, the dividends of the space program that no one really suspected. A little bit like Gagarin's vision, seeing the Earth. You know, we, we had to get to the Moon, we had to beat the Soviets, we had to do this, we had to, we... Well, the biggest surprise of going to the Moon was seeing the Earth. So this was, this was a, an amazing picture. Even the astronauts, with all their training, all their scientific knowledge, they were blown away by the, the, being able to see the Earth rise. So artists can travel wherever they want. That's one of the beautiful things. I was, I was talking to someone earlier about artists is that, uh, you know, it's a very, it's a very transportable uh, job. I, I lived in Italy for a while. I've, I've lived in different parts of the world. And you can just, you take your paint box and you go you know, wherever you want. So I spent some of my time in Maine. And uh, I don't know, have any of you ever been to the state of Maine? There must, is there anyone here from Maine? Are there any, there's some Mainers. Okay, yay, Maine. And you know about the beauty of Maine, right? It's an incredible place. You feel really next to uh, nature there. And 
So I've been uh, lucky enough to go to Maine for about 35 years. And uh, of course, Maine has already always been a haven for artists. Many famous artists have inhabited Maine, like George Bellows and Rockwell Kenton. Um, so I was certainly not the first person to go to Maine. One of the things that uh, I've learned over my 30, year of, 30 years of being a professional artist is the invaluable uh, prospect of, of working on location. So I, whenever I can, I take my equipment outside because I really feel that uh, that gets absorbed into what you do. I also have a fascination, obviously, because of my interest in, in space. Um, with translating this imagery um, about our connectedness to space, but also because of the age we live in. We, we live in a time where we've seen uh, the rings of Saturn close up. But uh, As some of you have done in, in some of your fine work I've seen out there, uh, artists like to toy with their viewers. You know, we like to twist their brain a little bit. So that's one of the really fun parts of being an artist is to, um, if you can surprise your audience, and uh, as some of you go out and become professional artists, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, in that when you, you create a body of work and over several period of years, you, um, you begin to formulate a, um, a signature for yourself. People expect things of you, which uh, is a very dangerous situation to be, obviously. So what you try to do is you try to, uh, you know, you try to sucker punch them if you can. So that's what one of the things I, I try to do with my painting is surprise the viewer. Uh, Mark also mentioned my affiliation with NASA. Um, did, did any of you, have you, any of you heard of the NASA art program? Not too many people, okay. Well, ever since uh, man started going into space, NASA had this really cool idea. Hey, we should, um, we should document this through the eyes of artists. So in uh, 1982, I was here in Washington, and I went to visit the National Air and Space Museum, and they had an amazing exhibit uh, called The Artist in the Space Shuttle. And it was all uh, paintings, drawings, printmaking that had, had circulated and been done about, uh, about the space shuttle. So I said, what do I have to lose? I'm going to contact NASA. And I did. And they said, well, send us some examples of your work. And so I did. And, and a few months later, I, there I was at, uh, at the Kennedy Space Center, Cape Canaveral. And uh, did you know that a... Uh, an alligator can run as fast as a horse over a, over a distance of 50 yards. <laughs> well, that's what they kept telling us. So uh, that's, that's me on the left with a hat. But I, I always had this in the back of my mind that a, that a, big, uh, a big gator was going to come up out of the swamp. Because you know, the, the Space Center is in a swamp. Um, some people cho chose to take, uh, take photographs, which is fine. Um, you see, I, I have this little uh, easel that I, that I built that I always worked on. And, um, so again, this was an amazing experience to actually be there and see the nuts and bolts of it all. So these are the kinds of programs that you should, uh, as artists, you should seek out and, and become a part of. Uh, subsequently, over the years, I, I did other projects for them. Uh, I did a piece after the Challenger accident, and uh, I was the first artist to, to go, and go inside the, uh, the wind tunnels at the Langley Research Center. Um, where even as a NASA commissioned artist, people came up to me with guns and they said, I'm sorry, Mr. Mort, you can't draw that. That's top secret. So there's always a, there's always a problem uh, with security. Uh, for NASA, I was required to do one finished piece of work and whatever studies I did at, uh, at Cape Canaveral. I ended up doing seven paintings, which I, I didn't get any extra money for, but I was just so electrified by the experience of, of being there and uh, you get to witness a launch. So um, not too many years ago, it was the, uh, was it the 40th or the 30th anniversary of Apollo 11? 69, that would be 40 years, 40 years already. Um, so I did this, uh, what, what some of you may recognize as a Trump Alloy painting, and these are, are, are all watercolor paintings, I think I mentioned that. Uh, we show Neil Armstrong and uh, um, a ma actually a map of where they landed on the moon. Of course, the very famous footprint. But then I enclosed the uh, uh, the cancellation date on the on the on the envelope is of course the the moon landing day. 